5. English Literature During the 19th Century A Historical Survey of English Language and Literature Exercises Group A A. Multiple Choice Questions Tick, square root, the best answer 1. Romantic movement started in English literature with the publication of the, in 1798 A. Songs of Innocence B. Songs of Experience C. Lyrical Ballads D. Lucidas 2. Writers were against established rules, reason and logic A. Restoration period B. Romantic period C. Victorian period D. Elizabethan period 3. One of the features of the Romantic poets is A. Strictness in language and style B. Loyalty to the rulers C. High level of emotion and imagination D. All of the above 4. Wrote poems about mythical characters and themes A. William Wordsworth B. P. B. Shelley C. John Keats D. S. T. Coleridge 5. The Romantic period begins in 1785 and extends to around A. 1830 B. 1831 C. 1832 D. 1833 6. The Victorian period begins in 1832 and extends to around A. 1900 B. 1901 C. 1902 D. 1903 7. Romantic movement started with the publication of the Lyrical Ballads in, which was characterized by the free will, love of nature, and simplicity in writing. A. 1796 B. 1797 C. 1798 D. 1799 8. Is a literary movement that came as the reaction to the 18th century, the age of reason. A. Restoration B. Romanticism C. Victorian D. Elizabethan 9. Is not the feature of the Romantic period. A. Use of simple language B. Love of scientific development D. Sense of nationalism E. Rev revolt against realism 10. Is not the feature of the Romantic period. A. Spontaneity B. Influence of subjective trend C. Romantic enthusiasm D. The age of prose 11. Poets like William Wordsworth, S. T. Coleridge, P. B. Shelley, John Keats, and prose writers like Thomas de Quincey, Charles Lamb, and William Hazlitt contributed a lot for the development of the literature of the A. Restoration period B. Romantic period C. Victorian period. D. Elizabethan period. 12. Is the collection of Wordsworth's 14 books of verse which records his memory of the visit to different places and childhood experiences. A. Westminster Bridge. B. Tintern Abbey. C. The Prelude. D. The Excursion. 13. The Excursion is a nine-volume book which planned to complete as the philosophical work, but couldn't complete until his death. A. William Wordsworth B. S. T. Coleridge C. Samuel Taylor Coleridge D. P. B. Shelley 14. Kubla Khan This poem gives the imaginary description of the castle of Kubla Khan, the emperor of ancient. A. Mongolia B. China C. Korea D. Vietnam. 15. S. T. Coleridge's Biographia Literaria is one of the most significant works of English literary. A. Article. B. Monument. C. Works. D. Criticism. 16. Is remembered for his romantic verses like Ode to the West Wind and The Mask of Anarchy. A. William Wordsworth. B. S. T. Coleridge. C. Samuel Taylor Coleridge 
D. P. B. Shelley. 17 is one of his finest poems and an elegy on the death of John Keats by P. B. Shelley. A. Westminster Bridge. B. Adonai. C. The Prelude. D. The Excursion. 18 is a poetic drama on the Greek Prometheus myth. It shows the victory of love over hatred and revenge. A. Westminster Bridge. B. Adonai. C. The Prelude. D. Prometheus Unbound. 19. 19 is a cry of impatience at the cruelty of the world. A. The Revolt of Islam. B. Adonai. C. The Prelude. D. The Excursion. 20. Shelley planned to write, as an epic exploring the nature of life but his untimely death by drowning left the poem incomplete. A. Westminster Bridge. B. Adonai. C. The Triumph of Life. D. The Excursion. 21. Died at the age of 25 because of tuberculosis, who thought that the aim of poetry is the appreciation of beauty. A. William Wordsworth. B. John Keats. C. Samuel Taylor Coleridge. D. P. B. Shelley. 22. The Four Odes, Ode to Nightingale, Ode to the Grecian Urn, Ode to Autumn, and Ode to Melancholy, are the finest specimens in English poetry by A. William Wordsworth. B. Samuel Taylor Coleridge. C. John Keats. D. P. B. Shelley. 23. Ode to Nightingale, the poet wants to run away with the nightingale but he thinks that imagination is the best medium to escape from this world. A. Human. B. Animal. C. Criminal. D. Religious. 24. Is a long narrative poem written in the theme of love, which set in a medieval castle, a young lover visits his beloved's chamber, hides in her closet and persuades her to run away with him. A. The Eve of Saint Agnes. B. Adonai. C. The Triumph of Life. D. The Excursion. 25. Is based on old ideas, the old gods, the love of moon goddess for a shepherd, Venus and Adonis. He strangely treats old myths. A. Westminster Bridge. B. Endymion. C. The Triumph of Life. D. The Excursion. 26. Lord Byron was a romantic poet and a satirist, who in real life, was a, poet. A. Affectionate. B. Revolutionary. C. Violent. D. Excursion. 27. 27 is an adventurous poem which describes the life of rebellious and moody Don Juan. A. Westminster Bridge. B. Endymion. C. Don Juan. D. The Excursion. 28 is written in Spenserian stanza, a nine-line stanza in iambic meter, which is about the story of a man who goes off to travel far and wide because he is disgusted with life's foolish pleasures. A. Child Harold. B. Endymion. C. Don Juan. D. The Excursion. 29 was the literary critic who wrote Tales from Shakespeare with his sister Mary Lamb. A. William Hazlitt. B. Thomas de Quincey. C. Charles Lamb. D. P. B. Shelley. 30. Charles Lamb's Specimens of English Dramatic Poets Contemporary with Shakespeare was published in, and Essays of Elia was published in. A. 1808 and 1823. B. 1809 and 1824. C. 1810 and 1825. D. 1811 and 1826. 31. Autobiographical work, The New Pygmation is about his unsuccessful love affair with the daughter of a landlord. A. William Hazlitt's. B. Thomas de Quincey's. C. Charles Lamb's. D. P. B. Shelley's. 32. Main works are, Confession of an English Opium Eater, 1821, and Suspiria de Profundis, 1845. A. William Hazlitt's. B. Thomas de Quincey's. 
C. Charles Lambs. D. P. B. Shelley's. 33 is a novel about two sisters, Eleanor and Marianne. Eleanor is balanced, reasonable, and has too much sense while her sister Marianne possesses too much sensibility. A. Scent and Sensibility. B. Northanger Abbey. C. Pride and Prejudice. D. The Last Man. 34 focuses on Bennett family and the search of the Bennett daughters for suitable husbands. A. Scent and Sensibility. B. The Lotus Eaters. C. Pride and Prejudice. D. Emma. 35. 35, Emma published in 1815 by, is about mismatching romances and misadventures of the main character Emma Woodhouse. A. Mary Shelley. B. Robert Browning. C. Alfred Lord Tennyson. D. Jane Austen. 36, is especially the parody of gothic fiction in which Austen creates a simple and unidentified girl as the main character of the novel. A. Sense and Sensibility. B. Northanger Abbey. C. Pride and Prejudice. D. The Last Man. 37. Can be considered as the first attempt at science fiction in history of novel by Mary Shelley. A. Sense and Sensibility. B. The Lotus Eaters. C. Frankenstein. D. Emma. 38 is a story of the slow destruction by disease of every member, except one, of the human race, which presents tragic love and set in the future. A. Sense and Sensibility. B. The Last Man. C. Frankenstein. D. The Lotus Eaters. 39. Influence materials, scientific advancement, high democratic practices, social unrest, doubt and skepticism, pessimism, religious upheavals, political expansion, and rapid development in all the sectors. A. Victorian period. B. Restoration. C. Romanticism. D. Early 19th century. 40 is about the soldiers of Ulysses, who on their way to home from the Trojan War, happen to eat the flower of a lotus plant. After eating the plant, the soldiers feel that all the troubles of life, work, war, and ambition are meaningless. A. Sense and Sensibility. B. The Last Man. C. Frankenstein. D. The Lotus Eaters. 41 is based on Arthurian legend where the love story of Guinevere, Arthur's wife, and Lancelot is shown. A. The Idols of the King. B. The Last Man. C. Frankenstein. D. The Lotus Eaters. 42 is an elegy on the death of his friend who died at the age of 22. Later, the sorrows for the death of his friend change into an expression of a wider love of God, God and man. A. Sense and Sensibility. B. The Last Man. C. In Memoriam. D. The Lotus Eaters. 43. Experimented with new meters and the rhyming plan for his stanza with often Abba Patton. A. Alfred Lord Tennyson. B. Robert Browning. C. Alfred Lord Tennyson. D. Jane Austen. 44 is about a piper who gets rid of all the rats of a town called Hamelin by playing his musical pipe. A. The Pied Pipers of Hamelin. B. Andrea del Sarto. C. My Last Duchess. D. The Ring and the Book. 45 presents the psychology of the rich Duke of Ferrara. He kills his wife when he thinks that she is immoral. A. The Pied Pipers of Hamelin. B. Andrea del Sarto. C. My Last Duchess. D. The Ring and the Book. 46 is his masterpiece. It is about the events of a 17th century Italian murder trial. The characters in the poem are studied with psychological depth. A. The Pied Pipers of Hamelin. B. Andrea del Sarto. C. My Last Duchess. D. The Ring and the Book. 47. Studies Renaissance Artists. A. The Pied Pipers of Hamelin. B. Andrea del Sarto. C. My Last Duchess. 
D. The Ring and the Book. 48. Started writing poems from the age of 11 and she was more popular than her husband poet Robert Browning. A. Mary Shelley. B. Robert Browning. C. Alfred Lord Tennyson. D. Elizabeth Barrett Browning. 49. Dover Beach, a popular poem is written by A. Mary Shelley B. Matthew Arnold C. Alfred Lord Tennyson D. Elizabeth Barrett Browning 50. Was a poet and painter who also played the leading role in founding the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood of Poets and Painters. A. Mary Shelley B. Matthew Arnold C. Dante Gabriel Rossetti. D. Elizabeth Barrett Browning. 51. Mainly wrote religious poems and children's poetry. Her poems are collected mainly in Goblin Market and Other Poems, The Prince's Progress and Other Poems, Sing Song, A Nursery Rhyme. A. Mary Shelley. B. Christiana Rossetti. C. Dante Gabriel Rossetti. D. Elizabeth Barrett Browning. 52, was a poet and Jesuit priest. The Wind Hover is his famous poem in which he sees the image of the god in a falcon. A. Gerald Manley Hopkins. B. Christiana Rossetti. C. Dante Gabriel Rossetti. D. Elizabeth Barrett Browning. 53, the Victorian period is mainly the period of, light drama in the Elizabeth period. A. Poems. B. Stories. C. Novels. D. Dramas. 54. Is a tale of a boy who is left poor on his father's death. He is sent to work in a school, Dotheboys Hall. There, the master, Squeers, treats 40 miserable students cruelly and teaches them nothing. A. Oliver Twist. B. Andrea del Sarto. C. Nicholas Nickleby. D. Pickwick Papers. 55. Is an orphan. He runs away from his workhouse and joins a band of pickpockets. He leads a criminal life because of hunger and poverty. A. Oliver Twist. B. Andrea del Sarto. C. Nicholas Nickleby. D. Pickwick Papers. 56. The main protagonist, Scrooge, does not celebrate Christmas and he gains pleasure by behaving other people badly in. A. Oliver Twist. B. A Christmas Carol. C. Nicholas Nickleby. D. Pickwick Papers. 57. William Makepeace Thackeray's famous novels are. A. Vanity Fair, The Newcomers, The Luck of Barry Lyndon. B. Pandeni, Vanity Fair, Pickwick Papers. C. The Luck of Barry Lyndon, Vanity Fair, Pickwick Papers. D. The Luck of Barry Lyndon, Vanity Fair, Pickwick Papers. 58. In, Passionate Heathcliff Falls in Love with Catherine. A. Vanity Fair. B. Pandeni. C. The Luck of Barry Lyndon. D. Wuthering Heights. 59. Tells the story of an orphaned girl who falls in love with a married man. A. Oliver Twist. B. Andrea del Sarto. C. Nicholas Nickleby. D. Jane Eyre. 60. Reflects the personal experiences of the writer when she was in Brussels, without beauty or money. She then becomes a teacher and wins respect by her good character. A. Oliver Twist. B. Villette. C. Nicholas Nickleby. D. Pickwick Papers. 61. Describes the events in the life of a schoolmaster. A. Oliver Twist. B. Andrea del Sarto. C. The Professor. D. Pickwick Papers. 62. Is about Michel Henchard. When he is drunk, he sells his wife and daughter for a few pounds. A. Oliver Twist. B. The Mayor of Casterbridge. C. The Professor. D. Pickwick Papers. 63. Wrote her novels with her pseudonym George Eliot. A. Mary Shelley. B. Christiana Rossetti. 
C. Mary Ann Evans. D. Elizabeth Barrett Browning. 64. Revolves around moral choices in an imperfect world. A. Vanity Fair. B. Middlemarch. C. The Luck of Barry Lyndon. D. Wuthering Heights. 65. He is now remembered mostly for one of the most popular children's novels, a novel about a treasure hunt in an island. A. Pandeni. B. Treasure Island. C. The Professor. D. Wuthering Heights. 66. Short stories The Happy Prince and The Selfish Giant are popular among children. A. Mary Shelley's. B. Oscar Wilde's. C. Mary Ann Evans's. D. Elizabeth Barrett Browning's. 67. Bram Stoker's masterpiece is the story of a 15th century Prince Vlad III. It's a legendary work of vampire literature and films. A. Dracula. B. The Mayor of Casterbridge. C. The Professor. D. Pickwick Papers. Group B. B. Answer the following questions. 1. How did Romantic poets contribute to English literature? Explain briefly. The early 19th century poets are called the Romantics poets. These poets revolted against the poetic tradition of the 18th century. They turned to the nature. They disliked the set rules and orders of the neoclassical poets. Instead, they gave too much focus on emotion, imagination, originality and freedom in their poetry. Simple and commonly used natural language was chosen for their poetry. The publication of the first edition of the lyrical ballad marks the beginning of romantic period in English literature. It was combined work produced together by Wordsworth and Coleridge. William Wordsworth is regarded as a forerunner of romantic period. He brought a completely new approach to the writing of poetry. He had a great love for nature. Nature was God for him because it was a source of his poetic inspiration. Because of his poetic ability and imagination Wordsworth could paint ordinary things with beauty and charm. His main purpose was to make ordinary things seem wonderful in his poetry. His best poems and sonnets are Tintern Abbey, Westminster Bridge, and London, The Prelude, The Excursion, etc. S. T. Coleridge is also an important leading figure of the Romantic Age. He is both a great critic and poet. He is also a literary partner of Wordsworth. Both of them work together to publish the lyrical ballad. Coleridge could make mysterious events acceptable to a reader's mind. Coleridge's famous poems are The Rime of the Ancient Mariner, Christable, Kubla Khan, etc. Though Lord Lord Byron was a romantic figure, the classics had a great influence upon his poetry. His poetry is powerful but it lacks the poetical qualities of Wordsworth and Coleridge. His carelessly written poetry is often strong and beautiful. Byron's poem Child Harold is written in the Spenserian stanza. Don Juan A Long Poem of Astonishing Adventure is also a satire which attacks some of Byron's enemies. P. B. Shelley was a great Romantic poet who belonged to the second generation of Romantics poets. He was a very revolutionary and uncompromising figure but his popularity as a lyric poet is undoubtedly very great. He struggled against the causes of human misery and again accepted religions. His first important poem Alastair is written in blank verse and shows Wordsworth's influence. His fine poem Adonis is an elegy on the death of Keats. He wrote many beautiful lyrics in fine language. Some of his best lyrics include The Cloud, To a Skylark and O to the West Wind. These poems express his free spirit, forceful imagination and desire to change the world. John Keats blossomed early and died young. He was inspired by reading Spencer. He developed self-discipline both in feeling and skill which Shelley never attained. Foucault's sensation was a path to the knowledge and it was poet's duty to express it in words. His cad poem Endymion is based on old ideas of religion so it was criticized. Keats wrote many beautiful poems in rich detail and accused Shelley of using thin language. He is also famed for his great odes and sonnets. 
The Ode to a Nightingale is his greatly admired poem. His It to Autumn is a poem of scenes, season and a mood. On first looking into Chapman's Homer is one of the best sonnets of Keats. 2. What are the features of the Romantic period? Explain briefly. Romanticism is a literary movement that came as the reaction to the 18th century, the age of reason. Romantic writers were against established rules, reason, and logic. They thought that the poems should be written in simple language or the language of common people. For them, imagination was more important than scientific reality. Spontaneity and quick wit were the basic origins of Romanticism. The poets experimented on diverse subject matters and inventions. The Romantic poets wrote about nature, village, common people and mythical characters. For them, literature aimed to please the readers breaking the traditions and conventions of the earlier period. A. Use of simple language. Simplicity in writing is the main feature of the Romantic period. The poets used the language of general people, rustic setting and simple images in their writing. As the period of poetry, simplicity in language and easy images are basically found in the poetry of the period. B. Love of nature. Romantic writers returned to nature and enjoyed natural beauty in their writings. Some valorized nature and some others enjoyed being on the lap of nature. Wordsworth's Westminster Bridge and Shelley's Ode to the West Wind are representative poems with the love of nature. C. C. High level of emotion and imagination. The period is marked with a high level of emotion and imagination. Writers used emotional feelings in their writings. The poem Kubla Khan by S. T. Coleridge is an example of it. D. Sense of nationalism. Romanticism emerged the feeling of nationalism and high regard for national culture. Their own country, culture, people from the rural area and value of their unity helped for enhancing nationalism among the poets and the readers. E. Revolt against realism. 18th century realism was thought of having aristocratic literature. Romanticism is a revolt against the established norms of realism and beginning of literature of the public. The writers of the period experimented high level of imagination as in the poem Kubla Khan, Ode to the West Wind and Lucy. F. Spontaneity. Spontaneity in writing is marked in most of the works of the period. The writers focused on the message more than on structure. The poets broke the strict structural trend in literature and used free will in their writing. G. Influence of subjective trend. Romantic writing is characterized by subjective writing. The writers focused on subjective style and lessened objective one. They broke the trend of a writing with purpose and made as writing for pleasure. H. Romantic enthusiasm. The writings of the period have romantic enthusiasm, feeling and goal. The writers used a high level of imagination, romantic feeling, sense of love and enjoyment in their writings. I. The age of poetry. Romantic period is led by poetry in the leadership of the leading poets and their poems like William Wordsworth, John Keats, S. T. Coleridge and P. B. Shelley. 3. What kind of poetry did Wordsworth and Coleridge introduce in the early 19th century? Explain in brief. The Romantic period is one of the most fertile periods in English literature. Mostly, poetry flourished better than other genres due to the poets like William Wordsworth and S. T. Coleridge contributed a lot for the development of the literature of the, the Romantic period. Romanticism is against established rules of Romantic poets thought that the poems should be written in simple language or the language of common people. For them, poetry aims to please readers. Wordsworth says, poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, it takes its origin from emotion recollected in tranquility. William Wordsworth, along with S. T. Coleridge, is regarded as the founder of the Romantic movement in English poetry. William Wordsworth was born in 1770 and educated in St. John's College. He was the true lover of nature who could add charm to ordinary things to beautify them. He wrote poems about ordinary and common things. He said that the language of poetry should be the same as the language of common people. He praised rural life. The Lyrical Ballads, 1798, which gave the signal of the beginning of the Romantic Age. 
It was a joint work of Wordsworth and Coleridge. The publication of the first edition of the Lyrical Ballads came as a shock because it violated many established rules of that time. Its major subjects were common people, farmers, and shepherds. Even the language used was simple, everyday language of the common village people. The poems praised and glorified nature. They saw God in nature, which is known as pantheism. In the lyrical ballads, Wordsworth said that the subjects of poetry should be incidents and situations from common life and should be written in an ordinary language understood by common people. His Tintern Abbey was a poem included in this book. In this poem, the poet visits River Wye and remembers his boyhood days. He thinks that nature is far more superior to the corrupt human society. The Prelude, 1805, is the collection of Wordsworth's 14 books of verse which records his memory of the visit to different places and childhood experiences. Experiences. The Excursion, 1814, is a nine-volume book which he planned to complete as the philosophical work, but couldn't complete until his death. Popular poems by Wordsworth are, London, Ode on Intimations of Immortality, Lines Written Above Tintern Abbey, Westminster Bridge, Lucy, and The Solitary Riper. Samuel Taylor Coleridge, 1772-1834, was the founder of Romanticism along with Wordsworth through the book The Lyrical Ballads. He wrote about mysterious things. He made ordinary things seem wonderful. His treatments to supernatural themes and meditative dimensions made him a true romantic poet. His major poems are The poem, Kublai Khan, gives the imaginary description of the castle of Kublai Khan, the emperor of ancient China. The description of the castle produces strange and magical pictures. But this work of art remained incomplete because he was disturbed while he was thinking about the castle. The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner appeared in the first edition of the Lyrical Ballads. An old sailor described some strange misfortunes that happened to the ship. He shot a bird when he was in a ship in the ice of the South Pole. A curse fell for this crime, water supply ended and all the sailors died of thirst. At last, the mariner blessed the creatures of God and the curse was broken. He was saved. The moral of this poem is that crime against nature is a crime against God. Coleridge's Biographia Literaria is one of the most significant works of English literary criticism. 4. What is the contribution of John Keats as Romantic English poet? Elaborate. The Romantic, romantic period is one of the most fertile periods in English literature. Mostly, poetry flourished better than other genres due to the poets like John Keats contributed a lot for the development of the literature of the Romantic period. Romanticism is against established rules of Romantic poets thought that the poems should be written in simple language or the language of common people. Keats wrote poems about mythical characters and themes. He died at the age of 25 because of tuberculosis. He thought that the aim of poetry is the appreciation of beauty. Even in his short life, he worked for the perfection of English poetry. His poems are marked by vivid imagery and sensuous appeal and so, they give pleasure to the senses. Keats perfected the odes and wrote many lyrics and sonnets too. The four odes, Ode to Nightingale, Ode to the Grecian Urn, Ode to Autumn and Ode to Melancholy are the finest specimens in English poetry. The main theme of Ode on a Grecian Urn is that art escapes from death, time and change. In this poem, the poet claims, beauty is truth, truth beauty. Ode to Nightingale, the poet wants to run away with the nightingale but he thinks that imagination is the best medium to escape from this human world. This early poem in Dimion is based on old ideas, the old gods, the love of moon goddess for a shepherd, Venus and Adonis. He strangely treats old myths. The Eve of Saint Agnes is a long narrative poem written in the theme of love. Set in a medieval castle, a young lover visits his beloved's chamber, hides in her closet and persuades her to run away with him. Keats blossomed early and died young. He was inspired by reading Spencer. He developed self-discipline both in feeling and skill. Keats wrote many beautiful poems in rich detail and accused Shelley of using thin language. He is also famed for his great odes and sonnets. The Ode to a Nightingale is his greatly admired poem. 
Is It to Autumn is a poem of scenes, season, and a mood. On first looking into Chapman's Homer is one of the best sonnets of Keats. He also wrote a good ballad entitled La Belle Dame Sans Messi in which a knight dreams of his lady but later on he finds himself alone. 5. How did Romanticism shift literary trend in English literature? Discuss. 18th century English literature emphasized on intellect and reasoning in writing with logical segments and argumentative thoughts, rather than emotions and imagination. This age is known as the age of reason because the writers emphasized reason over superstition and science over blind faith. Since the writers of this period gave much emphasis on rules and regulations of writing, this age is known as the Neoclassic Age and even Augustan Age. Poetry was written with full of compliments and polite manners. The ideas used in poetry were often in a conversational style. We can even find some moral poetry in the works of Johnson, Waller, and others. Likewise, the use of allegory was common in the fiction of this period. Gossips, scandals, sexes, and marital intrigues with offensive sexual content became popular in writings. Essays ranged from philosophical to personal, covering the themes of gardening, environment, family, love affairs, and politics. Politics. The use of plain and direct style was preferred in many of the writings of the period. On the other hand, the early 19th century poets are called the Romantics poets. These poets revolted against the poetic tradition of the 18th century. They turned to the nature. They disliked the set rules and orders of the neoclassical poets. Instead, they gave too much focus on emotion, imagination, originality, and freedom in their poetry. Simple and commonly used natural language was chosen for their poetry. The publication of the first edition of the Lyrical Ballad marks the beginning of Romantic period in English literature. It was combined work produced together by Wordsworth and Coleridge. Poetry was defined in a new light in this work. Much emphasis was given on simple language, imagination, originality and poetic freedom. Nature was thought to be a proper subject matter for poetry. It was a work of great change and experiment in terms of poetry. Its publication gave a shock to the traditional poets and critics of the 18th century. They considered the language too simple and the change too violent. In the 18th century or Age of Reason, the writers wrote polished heroic poems carrying poetic rules. For them, reasoning was necessary to find truth. They wrote poems about kings, soldiers or courtiers and praised them. These writers preferred comfortable towns to the wild mountains. They thought that poetry comes from the mind. For them, the aim of poetry is to teach. On the other hand, Romanticism in early 19th century, the poets wrote simple poems without caring poetic rules. For them, imagination was more important than reason. They wrote poems about shepherds, farmers and common people. These writers writers preferred wild mountains and nature to the comfortable towns. They thought that poetry comes from the heart. For them, the aim of poetry is to give pleasure. 6. Discuss the contribution of the Victorian poets in English literature. Later 19th century poets are known as Victorian poets. Much of the writing of this period reflects current social, economic, and intellectual problems. The poetry of this period shows the crisis on religion and philosophy because of the development of science. Alfred Lord Tennyson is one of the most skilled and self-conscious poets of the Victorian age. He is typical Victorian who adopted the conventional religious and social views and values of his age. His later poems are serious and thoughtful as well as musical. His poem The Idols of the King is preferred by many people even today. In Mort d'Arthur, he turned Mallory's story into poetry. He made experiment with different meters. In his long poem In Memoriam, he laments for the death of his friend Arthur Hallam. Tennyson's shorter poems are generally better than longer ones. Ulysses is his most controlled and perfectly written poem which presents the heroic voice of the aged hero. The Princesses is the collection of his fine lyric, which shows his best mystery over word painting and musical quality. Robert Browning is major Victorian poet who voiced the mood of optimism in his works. For Browning the intellect was more important than the music. 
His great knowledge was the result of his self-study and travels. His reputation is higher as writer of dramatic monologue. One of his successful dramatic poems is Pippa Passes. Sordello is a good example of his difficult poem. The Ring and the Book is a poem based on a book that he found in Florence. Asalando is a collection of many fine poems which was published on the day of Browning's death. Matthew Arnold was a great poet and critic of his time. He had been a professor of poetry in Oxford for ten years. His works truly represent his age. A sad undertone runs through nearly all his poetry. His views of modern life, of its complexity, complexity, its sick hurry and divided aims are present in his poetry. Thursays is a poem of lament for his friend, Clough. In his poem, The Scholar Gypsy, the poet talks about an Oxford man who joins a band of gypsies and wanders with them. Memorial Verses is his sad poem in which the poet laments for the deaths of many poets at home and abroad. Elizabeth Barrett Browning started writing poems from the age of 11 and she was more popular than her husband poet Robert Browning. The Battle of Marthun was written when she was 12. Her poems are published in The Seraphim and Other Poems, 1838, and Poems, 1850. Dante Gabriel Rossetti was a poet as well as a noted painter. His sonnets are among the most musical in English. Many critics have accused him of writing immoral poems belonging to the fleshy school of poetry. But he argued that poetry ought to be based on the senses. Many of his poetic lines are written in a way a painter's eye captures the beauty of the thing. Rossetti wrote about nature with his eye on it, but did not feel it in his bones as Wordsworth does Rossetti was too fond of alliteration. Christiana Rossetti sister to Dante Gabriel Rossetti is one of the important poets both in range and quality. She mainly wrote religious poems and children's poetry. Her poems are collected mainly in Goblin Market and Other Poems, The Pri Prince's Progress and Other Poems, Sing Song, A Nursery Rhyme. Gerald Manley Hopkins was a poet and Jesuit priest. As his profession, he wrote religious poems. His poems are written in sprung rhythm, a poetic meter in which a foot consists of one stressed syllable and several unstressed ones. The Wind Hover is his famous poem in which he sees the image of the god, Christ, in a falcon. 7. The 19th century is known as the age of prose development. Explain. With the arrival of Romanticism, the 19th century prose reached a new stage and became for the first time a literary norm of its own. The 19th century is known as the age of prose development because various writers contribute their best. The essays of this time became highly personal and often whimsical. They also contained the wanderings of the writer's tastes and likes and dislikes. In this way, we notice the growth of familiar essays which represented another aspect of the romantic exploration of personality. William Hazlitt is more vigorous and less mannered essayist than Lamb. He was a plain speaker who brought to the English essay a new kind of life and commitment. The range of subjects of his essays is greater than Lamb. He develops a fast-moving, hard-hitting prose which is called literary colloquial English. His major work was literary criticism. He wrote characters of Shakespeare's plays, lectures on the English poets, English comic writers and so on. Charles Lamb is known for his social romanticism in his writing. He was the literary critic who wrote Tales from Shakespeare with his sister Mary Lamb. His Specimens of English Dramatic Poets Contemporary with Shakespeare was published in 1808 and Essays of Elia was published in 1823. He wrote many famous essays for Journal too. His style was gentle and very attractive marked with a relaxed and colloquial voice and genteel sensibility. His writings blended personal and universal interests along with his sense of humor. Tom Tom Thomas de Quincey was a manner less an angry person but he was a good prose writer. His autobiographical essay, Confessions of an English Opium Eater, made him famous. The essay tells the story and dream of his early life. He also describes how he began to take opium to reduce his pain and anxiety. He could write essays both in plain and ornamented language according to the subject of the essays. He has written many essays on various subjects. 
Jane Austen was one of the early women novelists and a leading novelist in the early 19th century. Her novels are calm pictures of society. She understood the importance of family and human affairs. Her novels deal with family matters and manners, the problem of marriage, pursuit of the perfect suitor, economic security, etc. She brought the novel of family life to its highest point of perfection. Sense and Sensibility is a novel about two sisters, Eleanor and Marianne. Pride and Prejudice focuses on Bennett family and the search of the Bennett daughters for suitable husbands. Emma, published in 1815, is about mismatching romances and misadventures of the main character Emma Woodhouse. Mary Shelley was the wife of P. B. Shelley. She wrote novels of terror. Frankenstein can be considered as the first attempt at science fiction. Frankenstein, a college student, collects bones, builds a human body, and then gives life to it. The creature is ugly but good. The Last Man is a story of the slow destruction by disease of every member, except one, of the human race. It presents tragic love and set in the future. 8. How did 19th century prose writers contribute to English literature? Explain. Development Development of prose, along with novels, was shadowed by poetry in this period. Still, there were great prose writers like Thomas de Quincey, Charles Lamb, and William Hazlitt, and the novelists like Jane Austen, Mary Shelley, George Eliot, Emily Bronte, and others. Romanticism gave equal space to the female writers too. Many female writers could expose their inner realities and feelings openly in their writings because of this freedom to them. Early 19th century prose bore the characteristics of romantic poetry to some extent because essays written in this period were highly personal and even whimsical. Charles Lamb is known for his social romanticism in his writing. He was the literary critic who wrote Tales from Shakespeare with his sister Mary Lamb. His Specimens of English Dramatic Poets Contemporary with Shakespeare was published in 1808 and Essays of Elia was published in 1823. He wrote many famous essays for Journal too. His style was gentle and very attractive marked with a relaxed and colloquial voice and genteel sensibility. His writings blended personal and universal interests along with his sense of humor. William Hazlitt was regarded as one of the quarrelsome persons in public affairs by nature but in literature, he is famous for his extended style of literary plain criticism. His essays are full of humanistic vigor and brilliant intellect. Hazlitt's essays are collected in Table Talk, 1821. The Speaker, 1826, Sketches and Essays, 1829, Literary Remains, 1836, and Winter Slow, 1850. His autobiographical work, The New Pygmation is about his unsuccessful love affair with the daughter of a landlord. Hazlitt wrote books on criticism too. His A View of the English Stage, 1818, On the English Poets, 1818, On the English Comic Writers, 1819, and Characters of Shakespeare's Plays are the works written on criticism. Thomas de Quincey had a great sense of romanticism in writing and was a profoundly educated man. His prose works are about rural life and the realities of the sorrowful living of the people there. His works are full of sympathy and humor. His main works are, Confession of an English Opium Eater, 1821, and Suspiria de Profundis, 1845. Jane Austen was one of the early women novelists and a leading novelist in the early 19th century. Her novels are calm pictures of society. She understood the importance of family and human affairs. Though her two brothers were in the Navy, Army, she paid little attention to the violence of nations. Her novels deal with family matters and manners, the problem of marriage, pursuit of the perfect suitor, economic security, etc. She brought the novel of family life to its highest point of perfection. Most of her characters correct their faults from the lesson learned from life's hardship. In her every work, she highlighted the need for friendship and respect for a happy family. Mary Shelley was the wife of P. B. Shelley. She wrote novels of terror. Frankenstein can be considered as the first attempt at science fiction. Frankenstein, a college student, collects bones, builds a human body, and then gives life to it. The creature is ugly but good. 
The Last Man is a story of the slow destruction by disease of every member, except one, of the human race. It presents tragic love and set in the future. 9. What are the contributions of women novelists in the Victorian age? The Victorian period is mainly the period of novels, like drama in the Elizabeth period. About 5,000 novels are supposed to have been written in this period and hundreds of novels are still read and enjoyed. Victorian novels mostly deal with social issues like poverty, injustice, inequality, racism, religious intolerance, material distribution, and many more. More. The setting of the novels is the contextual society and the characters are from all classes of the society. Many writers try to expose the inner realities of the people in their writings. Diverse voices of the people, desire for freedom and expression became the issues to write during this period. The major women novelists of this period are, Emile Bronte, Charlotte Bronte, George Eliot, Doris Lessing etc. One of the interesting developments in the 20th century literature is the remarkable increase in the number of women writers, especially novelists. Some women novelists generally deals with the same kind of subjects as men do, for example, Virginia Woolf and Iris Murdoch. Ivy Compton Burnett's novels deal with the family life in a very original way. She presents the reality of Victorian family life in her novels. Mostly her cruel and evil characters succeed whereas good characters remain unsuccessful in their lives. No force from outside or inside can change her characters. The bad are never punished and good are never rewarded. In her novels she deals with the traditions of the Victorian family to show that the reality of their life is basically cruel and destructive. Her famous novels include Brothers and Sisters, Parents and Children, and A Heritage and Its History. Doris Lessing is mainly concerned with the women's problems in her novels. Her first novel, The Grass is Singing, is about the sad life of a poor white farmer's wife. It has the setting of Southern Africa. In Children of Violence, the central character, Martha Quest, tries to break away from old social ideas and traditions in order to live a free life. In her famous novel, The Golden Notebook, Lessing deals with women's lives, beliefs and problems with her great courage, power and honesty. She explores how the pressures of the social and political events have been put on women. The people in the novel are seen hostile and unfriendly towards women. They hurt and treat female characters cruelly because they themselves are weak. Margaret Drabble's novels also present women as main characters. But they do not express ideas and feelings much about themselves, rather they are concerned mainly to receive higher education. In her novels, The Millstone and At the Waterfall, the central characters who find themselves in loneliness and frustration are brought into happy world by love and human feelings. Drabble creates a picture of unhappy in The Ice Age. The people in the novel are seen unhappy because they only live in one part of their personalities. It is shown as a danger to the whole of society. Over a few decades there has been a tremendous interest in the books written by and about women. Virago Press has helped in this field by publishing the books about women and their experience. Several important woman writers from the first half of the country include Rebecca West, Elizabeth Bowen, Storm Jameson, and Rosamond Learman. They have found a new audience in this way. 10. Show your acquaintance with 19th century novelists. The Victorian period is mainly the period of novels, like drama in the Elizabeth period. About 5,000 novels are supposed to have been written in this period and hundreds of novels are still read and enjoyed. Victorian novels mostly deal with social issues like poverty, injustice, inequality, racism, religious intolerance, material distribution, and many more. The setting of the novels is the contextual society and the characters are from all classes of the society. Many writers try to expose the inner realities of the people in their writings. Diverse voices of the people, desire for freedom and expression became the issues to write during this period. The major novelists of this period are, Charles Dickens, W. M. Thackeray, Emile Bronte, Charlotte Bronte, George Eliot, Louis Stevenson, and Thomas Hardy etc. Charles Dickens, one of the greatest English novelists of all time. He wrote novels based on social issues. He is a realistic novelist. 
he bitterly attacked the social evils, the money-minded rich people, and the industrial society. In his novels, he presented the lives of the poor, their miserable condition, and the cruel treatment of society to the unprivileged ones. He attacked the bad effects of the industrial revolution that caused poverty, diseases, injustice, and many other social evils. He showed how true man was surrounded by villains, social climbers, criminals, and cheaters. In his novels, he described and attacked many kinds of unpleasant people and places, bad schools, school teachers, government departments, bad prisons, and workhouses. His characters include thieves, murderers, men in debt, stupids, hungry children, and even prostitutes. William Makepeace Thackeray was born and raised in a wealthy family. He is famous for his humorous and ironic description of the middle and upper classes of his time. He attacked the behaviors, duplicity and falsity of the upper-class society. society. He gave an honest view of life. He knew that men and women were complex and humans had both good and bad qualities. His novels are realistic, colorful, and vivid. He understood that weak and innocent people were not rewarded but pushed to the wall. His major novels are Emily Bronte wrote the only novel entitled The Wuthering Heights and became popular for it. She also published a collection of poetry in collaboration with her sister Charlotte Bronte. The characters of her novel are passionate but cruel. She was too much imaginative and passionate than her sister Charlotte Bronte. Charlotte Bronte spent most of her creative life with her sister, Emily Bronte and the readers of English literature know them as Bronte sisters. They lived in poor surroundings. Poverty and unhappy life frequently appeared in Charlotte's novels. In the initial days, like many women writers of her time, she wrote with a pseudonym like Kerr, Ellis, and Acton Bell. Her novels and stories attracted the reader's attention for their passion and originality and then, she started to write with her real name. Her novels could develop strong feelings and emotions in the readers. Her novels are realistic and show the vicissitudes of poor families. In Thomas Hardy's novels, nature plays an important part. Almost all of his novels are set in Wessex, among farms, trees, fields, and low hills. His novels are darker and pessimistic in tone. The characters are controlled by fate, chance, and natural forces. The characters work hard but cannot fight with the fate or natural force and die a miserable death. Most of Hardy's characters cannot control their passion, greed, and lust. So, they are destined to fall. All of Hardy's major works deal with an unhappy relationship and divorce. He thought that in this meaningless world, people only suffer and surrender to fate. Fate. Mary Ann Evans wrote her novels with her pseudonym George Eliot. Eliot wrote with sympathy, wisdom, and realism about English country people and towns. She seriously dealt with social and moral problems blended with human psychology. She wrote karma books which are full of moral lessons. She wanted to preach moral lessons through her novels. Her novels are set in the domestic and rural environment. Poet, travel writer and novelist, Louis Stevenson, is an unforgettable novelist, especially related to children's novels. He is now remembered mostly for one of the most popular children's novels Treasure Island, a novel about a treasure hunt in an island. Kidnapped, Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde are his other popular novels. He is one of the most translated authors in world literature. 11. What are the contributions of novelist Charles Dickens in the Victorian age? The Victorian period is mainly the period of novels, like drama in the Elizabeth period. About 5,000 novels are supposed to have been written in this period and hundreds of novels are still read and enjoyed. Victorian novels mostly deal with social issues like poverty, injustice, inequality, ra racism, religious intolerance, material distribution, and many more. The setting of the novels is the contextual society and the characters are from all classes of the society. Many writers try to expose the inner realities of the people in their writings. Diverse voices of the people, desire for freedom and expression became the issues to write during this period. Charles Dickens, 1812-1870, is one of the greatest English novelists of all time. He wrote novels based on social issues. He is a realistic novelist. 
he bitterly attacked the social evils, the money-minded rich people, and the industrial society. In his novels, he presented the lives of the poor, their miserable condition, and the cruel treatment of society to the unprivileged ones. He attacked the bad effects of the industrial revolution that caused poverty, diseases, injustice, and many other social evils. He showed how true man was surrounded by villains, social climbers, criminals, and cheaters. In his novels, he described and attacked many kinds of unpleasant people and places, bad schools, school teachers, government departments, bad prisons, and workhouses. His characters include thieves, murderers, men in debt, stupids, hungry children, and even prostitutes. His major novels are Hard Times, Thomas Gradgrind is a scientific man who teaches his children about facts and scientific reasoning. Emotion and imagination are never allowed in the lives of children. Consequently, his son robs the bank of his own relative while his daughter becomes a fragmented woman. Later Gradgrind understands his foolishness. This novel is an attack on science and scientific reasoning. A Christmas Carol, the main protagonist, Scrooge, does not celebrate Christmas and he gains pleasure by behaving other people badly. He is greedy and selfish. Selfish. Three ghosts remind him of his past, present, and future and his coming death. Scrooge, then, becomes helpful, warm, loving, and finally, leads a religious life. Nicholas Nickleby, this is a tale of a boy who is left poor on his father's death. He is sent to work in a school, Dotheboys Hall. There, the master, Squeers, treats forty miserable students cruelly and teaches them nothing. Nicholas beats the criminal Squeers and then escapes. Oliver Twist, Oliver Twist is an orphan. He runs away from his workhouse and joins a band of pickpockets. He leads a criminal life because of hunger and poverty. Twist gets caught stealing from a wealthy man. The man finds that Twist is his nephew. This novel presents the cruel treatment of the society to the poor. The other works of Dickens are, David Copperfield, Bleak House, Pickwick Papers, A Tale of Two Cities, Great Expectations, Our Mutual Friends, Dom Bay and Son, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, The Chimes etc. 12. What are the contributions of novelist William Makepeace Thackeray in the Victorian age? The Victorian period is mainly the period of novels, like drama in the Elizabeth period. About 5,000 novels are supposed to have been written in this period and hundreds of novels are still read and enjoyed. Victorian novels mostly deal with social issues like poverty, injustice, inequality, racism, religious intolerance, material distribution and many more. The setting of the novels is the contextual society and the characters are from all classes of the society. Many writers try to expose the inner realities of the people in their writings. Diverse voices of the people, desire for freedom and expression became the issues to write during this period. He was born and raised in a wealthy family. He is famous for his humorous and ironic description of the middle and upper classes of his time. He attacked the behaviors, duplicity and falsity of the upper class society. He gave an honest view of life. He knew that men and women were complex and humans had both good and bad qualities. His novels are realistic, colorful, and vivid. He understood that weak and innocent people were not rewarded but pushed to the wall. His major novels are Vanity Fair, this novel is about an ambitious woman named Becky Sharp, poor but of noble birth. She uses her wit, cunningness, and duplicity to become successful. She has to change according to the society's worldly standards. This novel satirizes the values of upper-class English society. Duplicity and double standard are essential to succeed in life. The Newcomers, the novel is about the family of Colonel Thomas Newcomb and it deals with many generations of the Newcomb family. The Colonel travels back and forth to India and England and his son also travels a lot to learn painting. Many decades pass and the Newcomb family becomes successful to become wealthy and establish a marital relationship with aristocratic families. Thackeray wrote many novels and some of his widely read novels are, The Luck of Barry Lyndon, Pandeni, Men's Wives, The Rose and the Ring, The Adventures of Philip. The Virginians and the History of Henry Esmond. F 
13. What are the contributions of novelist Thomas Hardy in the Victorian age? The Victorian period is mainly the period of novels, like drama in the Elizabeth period. About 5,000 novels are supposed to have been written in this period and hundreds of novels are still read and enjoyed. Victorian novels mostly deal with social issues like poverty, injustice, inequality, racism, religious intolerance, material distribution, and many more. The setting of the novels is the contextual society and the characters are from all classes of the society. Many writers try to expose the inner realities of the people in their writings. Diverse voices of the people, desire for freedom and expression became the issues to write during this period. In his novels, nature plays an important part. Almost all of his novels are set in Wessex, among farms, trees, fields, and low hills. His novels are darker and pessimistic in tone. The characters are controlled by fate, chance, and natural forces. The characters work hard but cannot fight with the fate or natural force and die a miserable death. Most of Hardy's characters cannot control their passion, greed and lust. So, they are destined to fall. All of Hardy's major works deal with an unhappy relationship and divorce. He thought that in this meaningless world, people only suffer and surrender to fate. Far from the madding crowd, in this novel, Gabriel Oak, a shepherd, loves Bathsheba from the core of his heart. He serves her faithfully for many years. But Sergeant Troy, an attractive but cruel soldier, marries her and treats her badly. He is murdered by an angry farmer, and after many troubles, Bathsheba marries Gabriel. This is the story of patient love on one side and selfish passion on the other. The Mayor of Casterbridge, this novel is about Michel Henchard. When he is drunk, he sells his wife and daughter for a few pounds. He promises that he will not drink al alcohol for 20 years. He then goes to Casterbridge, becomes mayor and wealthy person. He falls in love with Luketta. But when his wife and daughter arrive, he changes his mind. Luketta marries Henchard's enemy. Henchard loses all his wealth and starts drinking again. In the end, he dies a miserable death. Jude the Obscure, it is a story of Jude Forley, a poor stone worker. Since childhood, he longs to become a religious teacher, but could not escape the problems caused by his own sexual desires and habit of drinking. Fate is against him. His marriage turns to failure, and he falls in love with a clever teacher. Sorrows follow their lives together, their children die, then Jude begins to drink heavily that causes his death. Tess of the D'Urbervilles, it is a tale of a poor girl, Tess, who is seduced by D'Urberville. She marries another man, Angel Clare, who abandons her on learning of her misfortune. Tess later murders her seducer D'Urberville to free herself from him. She is arrested and hanged. 14. What are the differences between 18th century Age of Reason and Romanticism? 18th century English literature emphasized on intellect and reasoning in writing with logical segments and argumentative thoughts, rather than emotions and imagination. This age is known as the Age of Reason because the writers emphasized reason over superstition and science over blind faith. Since the writers of this period gave much emphasis on rules and regulations of writing, this age is known as the Neoclassic Age and even Augustan Age. Poetry was written with full of compliments and polite manners. The ideas used in poetry were often in a conversational style. We can even find some moral poetry in the works of Johnson, Waller, and others. Likewise, the use of allegory was common in the fiction of this period. Gossips, scandals, sexes, and marital intrigues with offensive sexual content became popular in writings. Essays ranged from philosophical to personal, covering the themes of gardening, environment, family, love affairs, and politics. The use of plain and direct style was preferred in many of the writings of the period. On the other, on the other hand, the early 19th century poets are called the Romantics poets. These poets revolted against the poetic tradition of the 18th century. They turned to the nature. They disliked the set rules and orders of the neoclassical poets. Instead, they gave too much focus on emotion, imagination, originality and freedom in their poetry. 
simple and commonly used natural language was chosen for their poetry. Difference between 18th century age of reason and romanticism. 18th century age of reason. Romanticism, 19th century. The writers wrote polished heroic poems caring poetic rules. The poets wrote simple poems without caring poetic rules. For them, reasoning was necessary to find truth. For them, imagination was more important than reason. They wrote poems about kings, soldiers or courtiers and praised them. They wrote poems about shepherds, farmers and common people. These writers preferred comfortable towns to the wild mountains. These writers preferred wild mountains and nature to the comfortable towns. They thought that poetry comes from the mind. They thought that poetry comes from the heart. For them, the aim of poetry is to teach. For them, the aim of poetry is to give pleasure. 15. Write the status of English language in 19th century English society. Britain was an empire for 200 years between the 18th and 20th centuries and the English language continued to change as the British Empire moved across the world to the USA, Australia, New Zealand, India, Asia and Africa. They sent people to settle and live in their conquered places and expanded their business there. As settlers interacted with natives, new words were added to the English vocabulary. vocabulary. For example, kangaroo and boomerang are native Australian Aborigine words whereas juggernaut and turban came from India. The use of standard forms of language was more focused in the beginning. In Romanticism, the writings were supposed to imitate the simple language reflecting the rustic life. Thomas Hardy was among the first novelists to understand the social and personal significance of dialects to standard English. He remained for the most part constrained by the Victorian convention that the characters in a novel should consistently speak standard English. The trend of use of local dialects was discouraged in writing but later, it shifted to the local use of language. Regarding the poems in this century, Tennyson used local Lincoln Shrine dialect in many of his poems although they were rarely used. Thomas Hardy acknowledged the considerable influence of William Barnes, the Dorset poet, regarding the use of language in the Wessex novels and his own novels. Dickens's use of Cockney dialect in creating low-class London character is the best-known example of dialect in this age. Likewise, Sir Walter Scott used scouts for similar reasons in several of his Waverley novels. Therefore, the use of local dialect was dominant in several writings in the latter part of this century. After the rule governing literature of the 18th century, there was the feel that literature needs to cross the realistic and classical boundaries and should be explored with social changes. The majority of literature in the 18th century was written in urban areas, on city people and their behaviors. Towards the end of the 18th century, poets like William Blake, Thomas Gray and others indicated the sense of freedom in their writings. 19th century English literature is divided into two periods, the Romantic period and the Victorian period. The Romantic period is famous for the literature written in the first four decades of the century while the Victorian period is the period during the reign of Queen Victoria, 1837-1901. The literary bird caged in the urban areas came into open nature in the Romantic period and again went towards the factories and workhouses in the Victorian period. Romantic movement started with the publication of, of the Lyrical Ballads in 1798. It was characterized by the free will, love of nature, and simplicity in writing whereas mystic realities and social matters became the themes and subjects for Victorian literature. 16. Write short notes on a. Victorian period. Later 19th century poets are known as Victorian poets. Much of the writing of this period reflects current social, economic, and intellectual problems. The poetry of this period shows the crisis on religion and philosophy because of the development of science. The Victorian period is mainly the period of novels, like drama in the Elizabeth period. About 5,000 novels are supposed to have been written in this period and hundreds of novels are still read and enjoyed. Victorian novels mostly deal with social issues like poverty, injustice, inequality, racism, religious intolerance, material distribution, and many more. The setting of the novels is the contextual society and the characters are from all classes of the society. 
many writers try to expose the inner realities of the people in their writings. Diverse voices of the people, desire for freedom and expression became the issues to write during this period. The major novelists of this period are, Charles Dickens, W. M. Thackeray, Emile Bronte, Charlotte Bronte, George Eliot, Louis Stevenson, and Thomas Hardy. Marked by melancholy, mourning, didacticism, the abundance of imagination, and domination of poetic qualities upon prose, the Victorian period has notable development, development of literature. It gave rise to English novels. It influenced materials, scientific advancement, high democratic practices, social unrest, doubt and skepticism, pessimism, religious upheavals, political expansion, and rapid development in all the sectors. The notable poets of this period were, Alfred Lord Tennyson, Matthew Arnold, Robert Browning, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, Christina Rossetti, and G. M. Hopkins. The Victorian period is the period during the reign of Queen Victoria, 1837-1901. The literary bird caged in the urban areas came into open nature in the Romantic period and again went towards the factories and workhouses in the Victorian period. Mystic realities and social matters became the themes and subjects for Victorian literature. B. Romantic period. Romanticism is against established rules of romantic poets thought that the poems should be written in simple language or the language of common people. For them, poetry aims to please readers. Wordsworth says, poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, it takes its origin from emotion recollected in tranquility. Romanticism is a literary movement that came as the reaction to the 18th century, the age of reason. Romantic writers were against established rules, reason, and logic. They thought that the poems should be written in simple language or the language of common people. For them, imagination was more important than scientific reality. Spontaneity and quick wit were the basic origins of Romanticism. The poets experimented on diverse subject matters and inventions. The Romantic poets wrote about nature, village, common people, and mythical characters. For them, literature aimed to please the readers breaking the, the traditions and conventions of the earlier period. Publication of William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge's Lyrical Ballads in 1798 brought a radical change in the Renaissance spirit of writing. As the foundation for the Romantic movement in English literature, the book flourished the free will, love of nature, simple expressions, and use of popular verse in writing. This period is basically dominated by the development of Romantic poetry. The Romantic period is famous for the literature written in the first four decades of the century. The literary bird caged in the urban areas came into open nature in the Romantic period. Romantic movement started with the publication of the Lyrical Ballads in 1798. It was characterized by the free will, love of nature, and simplicity in writing. See, the Lyrical Ballads. William Wordsworth, along with S. T. Coleridge, is regarded as the founder of the Romantic movement in English poetry. He was born in 1770 and educated in St. John's College. He was the true lover of nature who could add charm to ordinary things to beautify them. He wrote poems about ordinary and common things. He said that the language of poetry should be the same as the language of common people. He praised rural life. S. T. Coleridge was the founder of Romanticism along with Wordsworth through the book The Lyrical Ballads. He wrote about mysterious things. He made ordinary things seem wonderful. His treatments to supernatural themes and meditative dimensions made him a true Romantic poet. The Lyrical Ballads, 1798, gave the signal of the beginning of the Romantic Age. It was a joint work of Wordsworth and Coleridge. The publication of the first edition of the Lyrical Ballads came as a shock because it violated many established rules of that time. Its major subjects were common people, farmers, and shepherds. Even the language used was simple, everyday language of the common village people. The poems praised and glorified nature. They saw God in nature, which is known as pantheism. In the Lyrical Ballads, Wordsworth said that the subjects of poetry should be incidents and situations from common life and should be written in an ordinary language understood by common people. His Tintern Abbey was a poem included in this book. 
In this poem, the poet visits River Wye and remembers his boyhood days. He thinks that nature is far more superior to the corrupt human society. Notes. Red words are verbs. Blue words are adjectives. Light magenta, purple words are adverbs. Light green words are nouns.